Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look through my collection of John Norman Gore paperbacks. Now these were a little controversial in their time, not least of which for their slightly risque covers. However, it's been a long time since I've been through them, certainly two or three years at least, and I'm not 100% sure how good a condition these are actually going to be. So that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So sit back, relax, and let's get cleaning. So we'll start off with book number one here, and this is the American ones. We'll have a, a zoom through first. Now, in the original series, there's 25 runs, and then sort of in the late 90s, uh, John Norman did revive the series again, and I'm not sure how many more books have come after that, but I'm only sort of interested in the vintage ones, which uh, petered off towards the tail end of the 1980s. But this is the very first one by Ballantyne, Tarnsman of Gore. And... Uh, this is, as I said, these are the American run first. December 1966 is when this first one came out. And it's a little, a little bit dusty by the look of it. And in fact, as I go through these, there's a few that I wouldn't mind upgrading. And this very first book is going to be, uh, going to be on the list. I mean, it's not too bad. It's just a little bit sort of grubby. Then we've got, um, Outlaw of Gore. Now, Ballantyne published the first six in the States, and then I think the content got a little bit too risque for them, and they decided to uh, to knock it on the head. And that sort of coincided with um, the books being published by Dor, who just sort of started back then. Priest Kings of Gore, and they took out the series and published it right through to the very final volume. And that's not too bad. Now, it took me a long time to get all these Gore books, and uh, for a while they were supremely collectible about 10, 15 years ago. I think as people sort of remember them, they enjoyed the cover artwork, which is generally very, very good. See, these are okay, but they've never been polished and they've never been brushed. But internally, so far, we've got no issues. This is a, actually a really nice copy of this one, number five, Assassin of Gore. But yeah, evidently, John Norman and Ballantyne fell out. December 1970. Gorin Cycle, Raiders of Gore. And, I mean, certainly the early books are quite a rollicking read. They're, they're pretty fast-paced, and I quite like the way they shape up. It's just a little bit later on, they do get a bit... You know, man, sort of, in, you know, making women slaves, and uh, they like to have their women chained up, and uh, and the men, some of the men as well. So it got a little bit too out there, I think, for a lot of readers. And uh, that was the very last one, the number seven, that was published by Ballantyne, and then from book eight here, uh, they were taken up by Door, with Door books number ninety six. Now, I have cleaned the doors, so. Most of these doors should be okay, bar perhaps the last few. More orders of Gore. But as I said, when I started this series, I wanted to look through every single book in the collection and every single shelf. And uh, even if there's a little bit of duplication with certain books or series, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes old books can benefit from a, a second cleaning anyway. So that's the first sort of 10 there of the American. Just slide them over there. Slave Girl of Gore. And you can see the attraction of these. They are, you know, the artwork on the front covers here is very much sort of high fantasy, isn't it? And uh, it definitely has its fans. Beasts of Gore. Now that's got a little bookseller's inventory there. I seem to remember back in the day, back in the 90s when I was putting this set together, I bought some off um, a dealer in Canada and I think that was their inventory mark. But I'm trying to remember, I think they were called, it was Brothers or Father and Son, and I think the surname was Thiason. So if Grant Thiason seems to ring a bell somehow, so if that rings a bell with you, do let me know. I seem to remember 
If I had books that came my way that were doubles or spares, I would generally send them over to them and then we'd just trade books back and forth, you know? This is back in the days when I had my shop because they were always after British sort of crime authors and science fiction. And they also said sort of collectible hardbacks, which is something I didn't do a lot of back in my day. I used to stick to paperbacks. This one's got a couple of little stains on it, so hopefully we'll be able to get some of that off with the polish. Number 15. Guardsman of Gore. Savages. And Blood Brothers. The books did tend to get a bit thicker as they went on, actually, in time. I know um, John Norman himself was a bit of a, a regular person on the scene of the uh, American conventions, even though I believe he was born in Bristol in the UK. 20. 21 mercenaries. Yeah, these have been pretty, on the whole, really nice condition. Just a little bit dusty and definitely will benefit from a uh, from a clean another beautiful cover there sometimes they do list the cover artists on these door books yeah ken kelly i recognize his signature there's really great jackets on them nice copy of that as well and then oh i'm missing book 24 i must get around to getting that one so I'll put that on my list as well, Gore number 24, and here's number 25, the very last one, Magicians of Gore, which was the uh, the one that finished off the original run. When did this come out? 1988, June 1988, so that was the run. There was a couple of spin-offs. Um, this first one here is Time Slave, Door 169, and he did another one, which was published by Door called Imaginative Sex, which... <laughs> which is exactly what you might think. Um, and it came out in Britain as well as the UK, but I haven't got either edition. It's quite a sought after collectible and probably the most expensive door book out there in actual fact. Um, and this was like a spin-off series, more in the sort of realm of Tarzan, which I've just got the one odd one here, uh, The Chieftain. Just like a spin-off by the, the sort of the same, not a spin-off, but a new series by the same author. In 1991, so I guess after he knocked the gore on the head, he moved into uh, that series. So these are the French ones, uh, Galaxy Bis. Um, Times of Gore, of course, this is it. I don't collect a lot of foreign language paperbacks, but I've got some, and I've got some gore ones, and I've got some French Star Wars ones, actually. And these had hardback editions as well as paperback, and I have had some hardbacks through my hands over the years. 1982 is when this came out. And I've got a few in this sort of Opta series here, the Banner de Gore. So when I had the shop, I used to trade with a, a French shop. Huh. Look at this, Carambar. And that is a French sweet, no, France. Yeah, I used to trade with a French collector's shop um, called Happy Collector in Compare in Brittany. And uh, they would look out for the French ones for me until I, uh, well, I don't think after the ones that we're going to, or about to see here, um, they uh, they came out with very sort of expensive hardbacks, the Gore books, and uh, I wasn't too fussed about those. And once again, they mainly concentrated on the earlier, more fantasy books rather than the risque sort of later ones, you know. These are fine, they're just really dusty on the top because they've never been sort of cleaned on the top edges or anything, you know. Assassins are gore. Interesting how the pages are inked, different colours. 
I think these French ones are probably quite scarce to find these days. I mean, I don't know. 1984, they are, you know, almost 40 years old now, you know. It's a very, very uh, risque. I guess they could sort of get away with a little bit more flesh on the continent. But, I mean, that's just a guess more than anything. Um, certainly their hardbacks were very, very close to the knuckle. And uh, I think we'd, uh, we'd get shut down if I showed those. I haven't got any anyway, but... If I did have, they're very, very uh, sort of graphic, uh, even worse than the books, I would say. But that's my French ones. Then as we move on to the British ones, I've got a couple of sort of John Norman related ones. Here's the British version of Time Slave. Now, this is um, Star Books, which is like a spin off of like Target and W.H. Allen. This one's got a little bit of foxing on the side, but apart from that, it's all right. 1981. And I've also got this one, which is Ghost Dance. This was earlier. The story of the massacre at Wounded Knee. And, uh, yeah, this is based in and around the Sioux Indians. This one's also got a little bit of, um, sort of fox in. Like it's been stored in a bit of a damp environment by the look of it which is not ideal, 1972. I had no idea it was that early. I mean, apart from that, it's all right. It's not got an unbroken spine, so that's pretty good. Right, let's get the British ones out. Okay, so for some reason, I've got two copies of Tarnsman, of course, and so this is by far the best one, although this has got a tear on the back. That one's got a tear on the front. <laughs> But I'm assuming they're both first editions, but I'll double check. So that is first published, 69 in hardback, 1970 in the UK as a universal tandem paperback. It's got an American dollar thing inside. And this is the same printing, but this is definitely the, the better of the two copies. But it's got a, like a price label inside, Elizabeth's. Six dollars sixty. So I have no idea where Elizabeth's was, and whether that's a American dollars or say Australian or New Zealand. But we've got it off anyway. Now see, that one's got some sticker residue on the front as well. I mean, that's by far the better copy out of the ones out of the two. And it maybe I've just kept the other one as a reader because. Although I've not read it for many years, the first book in particular is excellent when he sort of gets abducted. It really is a, a good good SF and it gets off to such a promising start. Um, and I remember at the time, now I think about it, I really had a tough job getting the British ones. Um, they just didn't seem to turn up. I'm certain they would be a lot easier to get hold of these days, but... Um, there's a few here I wouldn't mind getting slightly better copies of, although this one doesn't seem too bad. The Priest Kings. These early ones are nowhere near up to the same standard as the American ones, cover-wise, but they do improve later on, as we'll see. This has got a very shiny, sort of glossy cover for Nomads of Gore. It's like it's been uh, spot-varnished almost, but it's definitely... Uh, Kept it in great condition, that one, so that's good news. Assassin of Gore. Second hand stamp inside. 1973, so it looks like they were on the, the way to publish in one a year. Raiders of Gore. This one hasn't got any uh, varnish on it, so it's consequently suffered a little bit over the years. As you can see. Now this one, Captive of Gore, has got a really faded spine, so once again I'm going to put this on my list of ones to upgrade. I am off to a very uh, big book warehouse tomorrow, in fact, as I film this, so I'm hoping... Uh, if I uh, manage to get this one edited today, I'll update my gore list, and if I see any, I'll uh, see if he's got any that I need myself. This is another one, like, compared to the other ones, this is really quite worn and red. So it's another one I might 
might upgrade if I come across a nice copy. But I've sort of got to the stage now where if I do do an upgrade, I, I really want it to be a, a worthy upgrade. This is another one here, like very much worn and second hand compared to the other ones in the collection. Slide that pile over there. This one's all right. This is like a slight change in format. Um, Tribesman of Gore. This is like the last uh, one or two before they change over. Sort of, it's still the same publisher, but that's a tandem, and this is just says Universal now on the front. Um, this one's, I think that one as well, I'll cover by that A there is uh, Christos Akilos, who did a fair bit for Universal Tandem. He did quite a batch of the earlier Doctor Who jackets, and he did lots of fantasy art, you know, sort of LP covers, that sort of thing. A great, great artist who uh, passed away last year. Um, now, this is by Star Books now, so Universal Tandem has gone completely, and they're now being published by Star. And I remember as a kid, the shop where I used to buy my Doctor Who books had huge rows of these gore books. And I always used to be somewhat fascinated by them, and as you can see why. <laughs> Volume 13. And obviously the covers were selling these, but, you know, they wouldn't have sold if they didn't follow through on the internal of the books. And they definitely don't pull any punches. Fighting Slave of Gore. This one's a little bit worn as well. It's funny that some of these are not as good as I remember because I definitely had multiple copies of a lot of these, but I've probably kept the first printings, which is I tend to do, even if I've got better examples as reprint, because uh, I do like to have a first if possible. Yeah, this one's quite, quite fox as well. It's like a few of these have got damp, but it's not how they're stored today, I can assure you of that. I think it's just mainly the paper that they were originally printed on. But I'm certain there's there's better copies of all of these out there. I think they're pretty good sellers from what I know. 1982. So we were a few, the series was, you know, the British ones were being published a few years after the American, by a year or two by the look of it. Something grubby at the top there, which... Hopefully we'll come off when we get to the brushing stage. And this is interesting, this one is a reprint, 1984. So it's actually not a first edition of Savages. Blood Brothers, first of that, the real giants. That's quite nice with a little flash on the back. Jar of gore. I think this is another one which I think is quite scarce in first. So I'm not sure what printing mine is. Oh yeah, mine is the first, 1983. I just remember that being quite a tough one to get. Great, great artwork. I wonder if that's credited to anybody. Nah, no such no such treatment in the British ones, but it looks slightly familiar, like I don't think it's Ken Kelly again, but you never know. Players of Gore, Maestro, this one, the 20th one. Mercenaries. Huge books, aren't they? Dancer of Gore. Nice copy of that one by the look of it. I suppose being such big thick books, they're easily damaged, weren't they? Yeah, that's all right. Renegades, 23. Of course, not all 25 came out. They stopped at number 24 in the UK. They never printed the last one. 
magicians for some reason. So this is the last British one, Vagabonds. So not sure what the God, I've got a on it. Not sure what the uh, that's got a remainder thing on the bottom. Not sure what the print one was of this one, but I imagine if they'd stopped selling, that would be it. They'd uh, they'd knock them on the head. Yeah, lots of dust on this gonna greatly benefit from a clean. But there we are, that was the last sort of British one. So let's give all of those a dust off now. Right then, so let's get brushing. And these have never ever been brushed. Although I think some of the door ones have been polished at some point, but I'll give them another cursory clean since we're here doing it all. So far, not too bad on these. Quite nice to clean and brush. Quite a difference to the uh, the really early paperbacks in my collection from the late thirties, for example, and forties. Which, incidentally, is going to be my uh, next week's video. Um, we'll do some more vintage penguins in the main series, so that's next week's vid coming up. Enough. 
Even these French ones are pretty nice copies in all honesty. Which is cool. See, this one's really, really dusty. Really dusty. Must have been on the top of a pile at some point. Is all I can think of. Yeah, like I said, you pick off the dust off some of these, so definitely making a huge improvement. so far <sighs> even those weren't too bad you know we've seen a lot worse with some publishers haven't we One thing that's definitely evident is that the British ones were printed, certainly the early ones, on quite cheap paper and it shows, it really does show over the years how they've just not survived to the same degree as the uh, some of the American ones which are a bit more high, higher production values, certainly the door books, regardless of what the content is or the cover artwork, the door books were very well produced. And I've always said that, which makes them quite, quite collectible as objects in their own right, really. If you do want to look into the Gore books in a bit more detail, I have done a couple of videos, albeit a couple of years ago now, on my main channel, where 
try to put them in a bit more detail. I've got some like cover proofs and things like that. And we go through all the different artists and try and identify them all. It's a bit more interesting. I'll give you like a little summary of the, the stories and what have you. And I'll try and put a link to at least the first part of that um, at the end, in the end screen of this video. I suppose you could say I'd be quite good at doing shoes, shining shoes after this, all these book cleaning videos. These are these, just the covers really now. Right, that's all the books brushed. <sighs> Let's give them a polish. Okay, so, trusty Mr. Sheen. Is uh, going to be fine on all of these. Get one corner fairly well soaked in polish. Dab it in so it's not swamped, as it were. And then we'll give these the uh, the clean. Now, as I said, I think these Valentine and Door ones shouldn't be too bad because they should have. The door ones at least should have been picked up when I've done my door cleaning videos. So as I said, there'll be a little bit of duplication. But the British ones and the Frenchmen never cleaned those, so um, they should all benefit from these. And sometimes um, it doesn't hurt to uh, give books that you've already done once a second look over. So uh, that is what we shall most definitely be doing. So, as I said, next week we're going to pull out another 70 or 80 or so vintage Penguin books. The next one's in the series, the main series that is, that need cleaning up. Now, a dealer uh, who I buy vintage Penguin books off, he had a catalogue recently, and it was uh, another book collector who used to a book dealer rather who used to collect penguin books and he had the best part of uh, two and a half thousand uh, books in uh, his list but sadly all the, the last four I need for my main series penguins I didn't win any of them I didn't get picked out of the hat it was just basically a lucky dip in effect and I didn't get lucky so I got just uh, about six or seven upgrades to my uh, 
main penguin collection, which is fine, yeah, it's better than getting nothing, but I was incredibly disappointed because that's the first time since I've been collecting penguin books that I was within a shout of actually completing them all in one hit, which is quite something. Now, I believe I've got most of the rare ones out of the way, but the ones I'm after obviously are still scarce. But one of them, for example, I've seen three times this year in first edition, so it can't be that rare. It's just other people have either been willing to pay more, let's say an auction or a sealed auction, or I've just not been picked. So that's the way the cookie crumbles. I can't do anything about that. So there you go. It would have been nice to have said I've now finished the first thousand penguins, but I'll get there one day, <laughs> I hope. Yeah, I don't think these Ballantine ones had ever been done, you know? Because they wouldn't have been part of the main door collection, which has been cleaned. But even so, because I tried at the time to buy really nice copies when I found them, these aren't too bad anyway to begin with. They're just very sort of minimal wear. In fact, I do vaguely remember that the Gore books were some of the earliest books I tried to sort of tidy up, really, you know, because I was such a fan of the uh, the beautiful cover artwork. And I am surprised that no enterprising person has pulled all the Gore sort of book jackets together. I mean, even on a website, you'd think that was probably quite a good thing to do. Certain things, so there's a great Bond website. Um, I can't remember the name of it now, but you know every single sort of bond related book they uh they show all the different editions from around the world in different languages. It's absolutely incredible. I remember speaking of bond um Charlie Hickson, who did a run of young James Bond books, and uh like the first book in that series, Silver Finn. I've got like the British and American editions, but he had, um, I think that book got printed in like 18 different languages. And he said that every time a new edition or a new printing of one of his books came out, um, he'd be sent like a box load of that printing from the publisher, you know, wherever they were in the world. So he said, you know, his basement was full of books that he'd just been sent and he would just start giving them out because he used to do I don't know if he still does, because he, he followed the James Bond books that were the zombie series. And uh, I think he's, you know, when he would talk about his zombie series in schools and at library events, and I think he just gave the books away because he had so many. Um, you know, he would always bring a book, a box of books along with him, which he would just give away to, say, some of the underprivileged children and that. I think that was really, really a great thing to do. Very, very nice uh, guy, Charlie Higgs. And uh, the young James Bond books, brilliant. Even if you're an adult, I thought they were such a great take. And uh, potentially would have made a really good series as well if it had a decent budget assigned to it. But they were, uh, they were published by Puffin. And I do have all the uh, young Bond books. Maybe I'll pull them out for a video as well at some point. Um, really no idea what sort of condition they're in because they haven't been I don't think I've got them on display I can't remember I think they might all be boxed up it's simply because I ran out of a bit of room because there's quite a few of them you know and I have already filmed them for a video so I didn't think to uh, get them out again
think these door ones are too bad. I think it is predominantly going to be the British ones that need the most work. And even then, well, some are better than others, aren't they? So we shall we shall see. I might be able to get some door books tomorrow, actually, uh, when I go to this big warehouse. So again, I shall put the door books that I'm after on my list because I know he's definitely got some of those. Um, and I might find a few upgrades. Let me some, find some more door from my my main series. Amazing to think that this one here, the the 1982 Gore book, was 40 years ago. Incredible. USA ones now.
this spine sort of staining on this one, but unfortunately nothing that I can do about it to get it off. It's uh, it's splashed with something over the years, sadly. So that's finished all the American ones. Now let's uh, start polishing the next lot, the French ones. Once again, I don't think these are particularly bad, but I'm pretty sure they've never been cleaned. But I think when I got them, I got them in pretty nice condition anyway, you know, from my uh, my French friends. So. Uh, I remember actually going to France and checking out a few French bookshops and I didn't find any second-hand French bookshops. I could only find books, you know, French bookshops that were selling brand new books. So I never consequently found any second-hand gore books while I was over there. Um, only like much more recent editions, which were very much not as attractive as these. So I didn't bother picking those out. But these, I believe, are the paperback firsts of them, in France at least. And uh, I said, I've got these and I don't know of any more past it, but I can only assume they carried on printing them, because I know they definitely did in hardback. But I believe it was more for like a French science fiction library. I guess I've seen some of those, and I used to own a few, but... Um, and they were all numbered, I seem to remember as well. Sign, not signed, but they were all numbered. But yeah, I got rid of those a long time ago. I used to have a little run of gore books in hardback, you see. And uh, they didn't all get hardback, but some of them did for libraries and things like that. And uh, I did used to have a few. And I had a few other bits and pieces, like some box sets and that. I had a British book set and an American one, which I really, really regret getting shot of now but back in the day they were just duplicate books i had you know i didn't need extra copies of so i just got shot of them and yeah i do regret it because you don't see gore box sets anymore and the door ones they did lots of box sets lots of gift sets in america and i don't know how i managed to get it over here but it was a nice one and i wish i kept it but there you go can't keep it all <laughs> At least I kept one of each book, which was the main thing. Yeah, they said a few bits on the back. I can sort of feel it picking those bits up now. They would have been very hard to sort of discern, but there are little like, ripples in the uh, in the plastic covering. ones now. Now this one wasn't too bad but the next one was particularly bad. Anyway, 
Lovely. Right, we'll start on the British run. And then we'll be almost there. Well, we will be there. So picking up quite a bit of dirt off these, so I'm going to swap sides and give this bit of the cloth an airing because, as I said, I don't think these British ones have been done before, so they're going to really benefit from a polish. These are coming out really nicely. As I thought they would. Certainly some of these aren't in the greatest of conditions, so I will adjust my wants list accordingly. stack now. Of course the book, each book is like a brick isn't it so <laughs>
these are coming up very, very nice indeed, because underneath they were nice copies anyway. I seem to remember buying some of these off one of the, uh, off an old book publisher's rep friend that I knew. Um, they were like a, a pound a piece, I seem to remember. But they're really mint ones, and they were all ones which uh, he had as like samples, or he kept like one of each. He had a, a garage full of old books, in actual fact. But yeah, there we are. So I hope you've enjoyed looking through these cool books. They've definitely benefited from having a clean. On the surface, you may not, or it may not look like they needed much doing to them, but they definitely did. And they're far, far better now than they were when we started. That is for certain. If you have enjoyed today's video, do of course, please give it that thumbs up. I think it helps spread the video out a bit, you know, to a wider audience if YouTube sees that people are responding favorably to it. So if you give it a thumbs up, it means uh, that you've liked it. So hopefully you have, you know. Beast of a book, this one, isn't it? Absolute beast. Massive, massive, these British editions. I think they're even bigger than the American. All right, last part. Obviously, if you've not already, do please hit the subscribe button. Help grow the channel that way. And uh, don't forget, over on my main channel, I've got lots and lots of normal book content where it's not cleaning. It's uh, analyzing different aspects of different paperback series, both old and new. And I'm sure if you have a look, you'll see lots of stuff that you might be interested in, as well as other things that I cover on the channel, so like old Star Wars and like retro video games and things like that, which is also very, very popular. If you want to be a supporter of this channel, if you uh, you can join me on Patreon at patreon.com jillsborough. And support me there from a little as a pound or a dollar and on the main channel you can support me on youtube through channel memberships or super thanks and of course you can just uh donate as much as you want and if you want your name in the credits just let me know and i shall assume that you do <laughs> yeah thank you very much for watching today next week as i said it's going to be some more classic penguin books the next sort of run in the main series i think we've just tipped over 500 now i think as i recall so some good ones to be uh looked at but yeah thanks for watching today and i shall see you again next week with another video.